By now, you should understand the cloud service models around IaaS, SaaS, PaaS, et cetera, and you understand some of the economics and the differences associated with on-premises and public cloud. But let's look at some of the cloud deployment models that we typically see in the enterprise today. Uh, so for one, we've got public cloud, which is where everything kind of started from. So this is the common deployment model and what really led to the rise of cloud computing as a whole. Uh, Azure, AWS, GCP are your examples of public cloud providers and everything runs on your cloud provider's hardware. That's essentially the concept we've been covering so far. Uh, well, if we take that a little bit further and look at the advantages and disadvantages of each of these. Well, one, we get that high scalability and agility from the public cloud itself. We can scale workloads up and down. We can try features out. Um, again, we everything is on demand here, so that's a big, big advantage. It's pay-as-you-go pricing. You only pay for what you use, so if you will cover the cloud economics section, uh, there's no CapEx costs associated with public cloud. We are pr you know, primarily in this OpEx model for pay-as-you-go. We're not responsible for maintenance or updates of the hardware. This is a big, big benefit that you know shouldn't be overlooked um, because often people look at, hey, I'm just going to compare costs between on-premises and public cloud, but you have to also take into account that you're now no longer responsible for all that work to maintain and update and hire people for an IT department to specifically maintain the underlying hardware for your workload. Another thing is minimal technical knowledge required to get started. I, I put that in italics there. Um, this is kind of coming from the, the Microsoft Learn site. They say minimal technical knowledge. Um, we would definitely argue that, you know, I, I would say the fact that you've been doing this training, there is certainly some high level of technical knowledge uh, required to get proficient, but you know, we, we specifically say to get started, it's quick to get started in the public cloud. It does get more and more complex at scale. Um, so the disadvantages are there may be specific security requirements that just cannot be met by using the public cloud. These could be government requirements that haven't been overcome yet, or just your security team has a certain posture, or maybe you have a contractual obligation to a customer uh, that says you cannot put their workload in the public cloud. That's one of the things that sometimes comes up. Uh, again, there may be government policies, industry standards, or legal requirements, which public clouds cannot meet, and you don't own the hardware itself, so your ability to customize in certain areas may be a little bit limited. Uh, and lastly, if you have unique business requirements, going back to that customization, um, you may not you know, be able to meet those and you, maybe you need a specific type of processor that for a specific use case, then yeah, you're gonna have to build something out in your data center. If we look at private cloud, by contrast, this is where you create a cloud-like environment in your own data center. You are now responsible for the hardware and software services that you provide, and characteristics typically include self-service, automation, agility, and financial transparency. And I put these here um, because you have to essentially engineer these on-premises in a private cloud, and then your you know, consumers, your you know customers of IT come to you, and they get self-service, they get automation. You don't want them to put in a ticket it and say, hey, I want a new server, and then somebody's got to go manually build it. No, the, but the private cloud essentially should feel like a public cloud. Uh, you decide the services that you're ultimately going to provide in there. Now, let's take a look at some of the advantages and disadvantages of private cloud. So the advantages are uh, you have complete control over all resources, and you can support legacy scenarios that you probably are already supporting today in your data center. And perhaps then you just import those workloads into your private cloud so you can provide some of the self-service, the automation capabilities there. You have complete security control, so you control everything, you control every network device there, you control who has access to the data center where these workloads run, uh, and that really helps you meet you know, strict compliance requirements that perhaps public cloud cannot for whatever reason. Uh, some of the disadvantages though, and the big one with private cloud, just the large upfront costs, high, high skill set required. So I mentioned on the public cloud, it's a minimal to get started, uh, but when you compare that to the private cloud, a high, high skill set is needed uh, to build private clouds. As somebody who's kind of been through this at a number of companies and built them out and trained teams, and it, it's very, very difficult to get you know the right team and mix of people uh, together to really build that private cloud. Next, owning the equipment adds a lag into the provisioning process, a real key point for private cloud. 
you might want to go ahead and spend the money to buy the servers and the storage, but you have to wait for them to get delivered. You have to wait for somebody, perhaps in your data center team, to rack them and get them online. Uh, and that brings me on to kind of data center management as well. Sometimes the equipment is faulty. Sometimes you don't have the cooling requirements in the data center. There's electrical requirements that you have to have. There's a lot that just goes into just data center management, not only to provision the servers, but ongoing after the fact. There's security you need. You need to make sure people have badges to come in and out of the data center. Maybe they have two factors of authentication for security. They have to enter like a pin code plus swipe a badge. You know, all these things have to be taken care of in the in the private cloud. The next scenario is hybrid cloud, where really we combine public and private clouds. And this allows flexibility you know, to run in the most appropriate location. You can consume public cloud services as needed and potentially keep legacy workloads running on premises. Uh, but what are the advantages and disadvantages here? Well, we think about it now. Advantages are flexibility, we have support for legacy systems while enabling modern application workloads to move to public cloud. So a bit of a mouthful, that sentence, but think about it this way. You've got these legacy systems that are on-prem. We want to do modern you know, application development. Public cloud has all these services available. Let me do that out in the public cloud. Maybe I keep some VMs and old traditional services, maybe some physical systems, just continue to run them in the data center, continue to use the own equipment, the investments that I've already made. Maybe I bought a, you know, a five-year you know, um, plan with those servers, and I don't really want to just retire them if I only bought them last year, and really I've got the capacity to run for five years there. So that's some of the advantages there. You can kind of continue to make, make use of that and perhaps just connect your on-premises data center to the public cloud. We have network connectivity, and now I can take advantage of services in the public cloud while continuing to maintain my on-premises. So what are the disadvantages? Well, it's complicated to maintain and set up because now I'm dealing with two environments. I need to make sure that they work well together. Um, my people are trained on both. I can't necessarily just reskill people on-premises to have them work on the public cloud because I've still got to maintain what's going on you know, down here in the on-premises environment. And it can just be more expensive than simply selecting one model. And I would also say that about public cloud, if you just went public cloud, um, don't necessarily go and pick two public clouds. You know, if you're in Azure, stay in Azure and just do it really, really well before you add another public cloud. Every time you add a location uh, or vendor that provides maybe on-prem or public cloud services, you're increasing the skills that you need your teams to be, you know, capable, you know, of having to deliver the, you know, good experience to your application team. So, so with that, that's kind of the three major models. We've got public, private, and hybrid. The most common today that we're seeing in the enterprise is hybrid, but just keep in mind, it's complicated. It is, you know, there's, there's more to set up, but the benefits typically outweigh that additional complexity um, because you get in the benefits, you know, on-prem, we can leave those workloads running. We're not saying you always build a private cloud on-prem. We're just saying, hey, I'm going to run as is today on-prem, uh, and I'm going to focus on my public cloud for all my modern, you know, application workloads. And if you take in the AZ900 exam, uh, you will get various questions around this and what the appropriate um, cloud is based on the question scenario.